Very good. There we go, Mark. Hello, hello. All right, Vigo. Hello. Well, yeah. camera is not working, but I just have to see on Mark, so no problem. <laughs> is, is that all right for the um, seeing the hook in the vice? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, we, I'll start off with a pattern that probably one of the most popular that everybody everybody knows, partridge in orange. Okay. So um, two, two materials, thread and a partridge hackle. So orange thread there. Okay. Now th this thread is one of the substitutes because because you can't because Pearsall's is no longer sort of made. It's becoming increasingly difficult, you know, to find sort of some of the colours, and obviously it's becoming a bit more expensive. And this one is a is called ephemera silk, and it's from um, Fly Time Boutique. He sells it, and he does they do most of the colours in the the pearsall so uh, and it's quite good so we'll use that the hook is a spider partridge spider hook size 12 so put my thread on the original partridge in orange was just orange silk and, a, and a, say the partridge hackle. What I'll do, just a slight um, variation is put a, a fine gold wire ribbon. Let's put my glasses on. And that will give the, just give it a little bit more of a segmented look. So touching turns down the body. To a point, just just past the point, but not quite to the barb. And then take your thread back up in touching turns. Okay, then just wind on the wire rib. That five turns should do it, and then a couple of turns. and take off your wire. Okay, for the hackle, you want to sever from, let me just show you, so you can see from the, the back of the partridge, sort of, sort of browny, browny color. And you take your hackle in the normal, normal way, expose the tip, pull the fibers back. But with this one is take it a stage further because you want a, a fairly sparse hackle on this one. So once you've exposed the tip and pull the feathers, strip off the feathers on one side, okay? So, Try cut off the and 
and then wind your hat around. How many turns do you normally put on, Mark? Well, because you, you've stripped it off on the one side, you can probably put on four or five turns because you've only, in effect, you've only got half a hackle. So. You might just have one or two facing forward. You can always push those back. Just make sure you have those there. And then uh, just a two or three turn whip finish. Okay. And that's your partridge in orange. Uh, I have a question, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the hackle on the spiders, um, is there a rule for how long they should be? Well, to, yeah, not really, because this, the, the modern trend is for more sparse hackles. But if you look at the old, you know, what the, the old tires used to tie yeah. in, in the 1800s when, you know, spider patterns sort of first really came into sort of um, to the forefront. They were quite heavily dressed, you know. They are very a, big uh, hackles, yeah? Yeah, you'd have, a, you'd have a full hackle instead of a half one, which I've just done. And, well. you'd, and you'd maybe do three, a good three turns of a full hackle. So like a lot of things in fly time, it's, it's in the, it's in the eye of the beholder, really. You know, if if you like it more sparse, then you know, do it sparse. But the, the old the old patterns were quite heavily hackled, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's down to. I would say with a where you just like with a partridge in orange, where you're just doing a, a thread body, a, a more sparse hackle would is more in proportion to the, the whole fly rather than a, you know, a heavily hackled one. Yes. You know, that's, it's, um, it's open for debate really. Um, but that, that's that one, so. But um, uh, I have another question then. I have not fished so much with spider by myself, but uh... Do you have experience uh, fishing with these spiders? Um, uh, if they are better, uh, how do you address them? To be honest, I'm I'm not an experienced spider fisherman. I, I just enjoy tying the flies. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. I would think you know somebody like Tim maybe is a bit. He's got far more experience than I have of um, yeah. of river fishing. So. Um, I'm not really the one best one qualified to answer that. No, no, thank you, thank you. Okay, right. The next one is another 
another well-known spider pattern. It's called the hare's log and plover. Um, now, I'm going to do a slight variation on it because getting a getting the hackles for a, off a plover, well, getting plover skins are quite difficult to get hold of and they're quite expensive. I mean, you're talking probably about 50 pounds for a skin. So um, you've got to be into your spider tying in a serious way to justify spending 50 pounds. So what I'm going to do is, um, from, I'll just show you. I mean, that is a, that is a hare's log and plover with a, a genuine plover hackle. But I'm going to do a, a hare's, log, hare's log and woodcock using a woodcock hackle, um, which you can buy, a, you know, you can buy, buy a pair of woodcock wings for five pounds or so. So, you know, they're more, more readily, you know, available. So the thread for this is a, um, yellow thread, and we will use uh, some Purcell's gossamer silk for this one. And just thread that on. So just run your wax. You wax on the thread just just want just to give it a little bit of extra grip. What's the hook, Mark? The hook for that is a Partridge SUD Ideal Dry. Um, that and the spider hook are the two that I normally use. Um, it's it's a barbless hook, so obviously. More and more people are going, you know, to barbless hooks now. So you've got that, and it's a slightly longer shank than the um, spider uh, than the partridge spider hook. But with these spider, I think really most standard dry fly hooks are quite acceptable. You know, big Camasan B one seventy, full in mill, all purpose you know any of those will you know do the job so on with the thread five or six turns and then we want some fine fine gold tinsel flat tinsel Try that on the side. And take your thread down to, if you take it down to the point of the hook, and then go from there, go down to, in effect, where the bar would normally be. So probably three or four turns past the point and then come back up to the point of the hook. Okay. So the dub body is hairs here. And if you take it from between the ears, what they call the pole hair, which is a sort of sandy, sandy brown color. Just a few pinches of that. Mm -hmm. And dub it on fairly, you don't want to do not a tight rope, just fairly loose, just gently dub it on. Is that so the thread will show through? Sorry? Is that so the thread will show through? 
it's, no, it's, you, you don't want it as, as, thin, as thin as that. Um, so then just work your way up. Just try and get a little bit of a taper into the body. Just a fraction more. It's okay. And then take your tinsel and do over that yellow thread at the back, do three or four touching turns. So it's in effect like a tag. And then come up the body in open turns probably about four turns you'll get in. Tie that off. Snip off your tinsel. And then for this one, we want a, a feather from so woodcock wing and the, on the outside around the shoulder area, these sort of dark, dark feathers there. One ready. Okay, so that's what we've got. So, same as with the partridge hackle, expose the, the tip. But with this one, we don't need to strip off one side because we're doing a, a fuller hackle. So just so you've got a tying point. Just put that on there. Three turns, three or four turns, and then. Stroke the fibers on each turn. And I've gone for about three turns on this. So, tie that off. A couple of turns to hold it. That and then the two or three turn grip finish. <coughs> okay, you see that. 
Yeah, nice, Mark. Yeah, OK yeah. with that. So that's a hare's log and woodcock. Anybody got any questions for Mark? Yeah, just... just uh, I'm just going to ask you, Derek, if some of the boys could mute, because every time somebody makes a noise, I don't know about the others, but I'm, my screen goes off Mark and onto somebody else. Yeah, if, if you go to Mark, if you go up to the top, find oh. Mark's picture, and yeah. then go to the, the top right-hand corner, you'll see three little dots. Yeah. If you click on that, yeah, and then click on pin, Mark will stay in the in the center of oh, your screen okay. all the time. Okay, okay. All right. Right. I think it means when when somebody talks, Deck, it goes off Mark onto somebody else. It does. You're right. Yeah, Tim. that's because they haven't pinned it. Yeah, if if on the pin, if you click on the pin, you you should have speaker view and gallery view. Yeah. If you yeah. click on speaker. And it will stay on the speaker. Right, next one. Um, there's a, a traditional spider pattern this um, called the, the green tail, which is a tied as an imitation for it as a granum pattern. And I want to do a version of that, and it's been done by somebody I think that the Ludlow group will know quite well, a man called Louis Noble. Is that right, Derek? So, yeah, this, Louis, Louis's done a few for us. Yeah, well, this is his version of the green tail, which is a, and it's a, this pattern will be a as a as a granum pupa or emerger. So we go with this or thread, which is Highlander Green. Okay, so same again, run the wax through. Start your thread in the normal place, just beyond the eye. Five or six turns, snip that off. And then you want a length of brown thread. Again, it's Pearsall's brown thread, but any brown thread will do really. Um, you cut off about five inches, something like that. And then tie that in. And take it, take your green and just tie that black, that brown thread in down the body. And just cut that bit of waste off first. it down to about the point and then pull your brown thread with your right hand up out of the way and what you want to do is what you're trying to do is make up a like a little like a raised tag at the end and what this is imitating is the the egg sac of the female granum. So just a little bit fiddly, but you 
All right, when is it? So you've got that little, that little tag there. Now the technique with this, which you will find in one or two spider patterns is winding the thread on the brown and the green thread together side by side up the body. So the easiest way I've found to do this is, is use the rotary function on your vice. Okay, so what you've got now is alternate green and brown thread. So tie off that brown thread. And cut the waist off. If you don't want to do it that way, the other way is just simply just hold the two threads together and just physically wind them round yourself. But using the rotary function, it does um, just make the job a little bit easier. Okay. And then for the hackle, again, partridge, hackle. Um, But unlike the partridge in orange, we'll do the full, we'll just, exp, you know, we'll do both sides. We won't strip one side. It's sort of fuller, a fuller hackle. Okay, so we've got the, so we'll just snip off that tip. Just leave yourself a little tying in point. With a, with a lot of these, these Game bird hackles, they are quite delicate, so you've got to um, just treat them with a bit of uh, bit of TLC. We'll probably do three turns of this. But again, it's purely down to you, you know, a lot of it down to what you're happy with. And we'll finish. Because I'm using wax on the thread, I don't bother with varnishing the heads. I think. Um, you know, if you, the wax will give you extra grip and it'll, I haven't experienced any coming apart at the heads, even with a, just a two turn wick finish. So that's 
Louis Noble's version of a, a Granum. Granum emerger. Okay, any questions on that? All okay? What size hooks are those? 12. That's a uh, 12 and 14. I've gone with the 12 because it's just a bit bigger for sort of demonstration purposes. But that's that's a partridge spider size 12. Thank you. Um, but 12 and 14 is fine. Right, we'll do um, a terrestrial one now. One called the the Bracken clock, and the term clock is a North Country term for a beetle. So, in effect, it's a Bracken beetle. So, I've gone with a size twelve ideal dry because it's a slightly longer shank, which. I think we need for this flight. So just change the threads over. So it, the tie-in does state Pearsall's scarlet silk. But if you haven't got Pearsall's, just ordinary red red silk, you know, Unithread 8 or Vivas, anything like that will be fine. Because all you see of the, the silk on this fly is just the head. So it's not imperative, but it's got to be pearsals. But as I've got some, we'll, we'll use that. Okay, run your wax through again. Start behind, just behind the eye. And run your silk all the way down. And the body. Use your, this tag end as a guide to keep forcing the, each turn of silk up against the, the one you've just tied on. So I've gone to just past the point of the hook. Oops, just a, one more turn to cover that tag end. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, the feather you use for this is of a ring neck pheasant. These feathers on the, the neck, which I think are commonly termed church windows church window feathers so we'll get a one of those off okay now the problem with these feathers is is finding hackle small enough you'll get one or two initially but most of them are too big to just wind on as they are. So you have to use the technique that Gavin showed us a few weeks ago for tying in extra long hackles. So expose the tip. So we've, we've done that. And what you've got to try and just judge, because bring the thread up part the way up the body. Just, you've got to try and judge, if you can see that, where you're going to tie it in there. So you probably, you're going to bury about half of that hackle, which is, so it'll leave you about half, which is probably about what you need. Okay. 
I mean, sometimes you'll go halfway up, other times you might go two thirds of the way down. It, it just depends on the length of the hackle that you've got. So tie it in there, two or three turns, cut off that waist end. No, oh, sorry, tied it in the wrong way. Turn it over. Good side facing you. That's better. Right. So now we've got to tie in the hackle. It'll look, these hackles, it'll look a bit of a mess, but we'll, hopefully we'll put that right. So just tie it stroke, keep stroking the feathers back. And back <coughs> okay, and once you've tied that in, you've gone around, tie your stalk in. If you get a few facing forwards, that doesn't matter because we're going to stroke them all forward anyway. So cut off your stalk. Another turn there. So now you've got to brush all those hackles forward over the eye. and tie them down. Just rotate your vise and just check you've roughly got the hackle spread out nicely around the hook or guide. Just tease them around. Okay, and then take your thread up to just behind the eye, because all you've got to do is put a head on it. The last thing you is just putting the head on. So, so you've got that. So now you've got a bit of a bump there, but don't worry about that. Take your thread down. Tie over that bump and then stop about three mil from the from where your, your thread ends. And you want a bronze peacock hurl if possible. Just one strand will do. And a fairly long one. So, what a peacock hurl there. Snip off the end. And tie that in. Cut off the tank and take your thread up to just where you, you started at the top there. So then just wind your peacock hurl, but wind it back towards the bend. And then come back up through the hurl. And all the way up the body. The reason I go backwards first is just to add a bit of bulk to the peacock hurl at the back. So I'm 
Okay. Oh, and, uh, oh, it's all right. Once you've got it to the yeah, tie off the peacock. Snip that off. And then take a whip finishing tool. and put it in the middle of those feathers and push them back. Okay. And then put a head on to hold those feathers back. That should do. Just check the feathers are fairly, yeah, not too bad. And then we finish it. Not any. Try ones. There's just one there. And that is a bracken clock. Okay. Which I think if you were to put a gold tag at the back, wouldn't be far off a cockabundi, would it? I was just about to say that. Yeah. So there's not a lot of difference. I mean, I mean, it says in the writing that you fish this fly midsummer, so same time as a cockabundi, isn't it? You know. So that's a nice little terrestrial fly. Okay, happy with that. Right. Next one. Um, it's one, it's quite a dainty little fly, this one. It's called a, a little black or a fog black. But we'll go with a little black. So hook is, you can use either, but I'll go with a 14 for this one because it is quite a small. 14s and 16s you would normally um, tie this in. It sort of imitates a midge or a little terrestrial. So so we've gone with the ideal dry size 14, but you can use the spider size 14, doesn't, doesn't matter. And the thread for this one is purple. Which I think is quite, quite a nice, I mean, it's a lovely color. Then a Purcell's Gossamer Silk. Wax the thread. Okay, so on with your silk.
And when you get to about the point or thereabouts, cut off your tag end. Now the body, the, the body for this is magpie tail. Now that's a, a little bit near somewhere. I can, Those are magpie tails, and you get this lovely sort of green iridescent color on it. So what you need is, all it is is just the nature of the whole piece. Yeah, it ended up falling from a greater height. Yeah, probably just three fibers. That's all you need. And we've got that there. So just tie the, the tip in. And go down to a point where you, the barb would normally be. Okay. Now this is delicate stuff, so you've got to be just be very gentle with it. Snip off those loose tag ends. Apple pliers. <coughs> okay, and wind the magpie hurl up like you're winding up ribbing up with wire or tinsel. So sort of four, four or five turns, open turns. Try not to twist the hurl because it as you do one turn, obviously the thread it will twist. So you just keep so when you've you've got no, I'll leave it at that. And then just let that hang. The weight of your hackle pliers will stop it unraveling. And then wind through the gaps in the hurl with your purple thread. And then tie it off. the tip of the head. Okay, so then you can snip off. I'll put a, I'll send Eric a picture of this and it'll, it'll show it up more clearly, but the object is to, you'll see that purple thread showing up quite clearly through the, the, hurt, the turns of the magpie hurl. Okay, so we've done that bit. Now, the, the hackle, you've got a choice. You can use the traditional, which is a starling feather, which you take off the back of the starling. There, so these got these gold tips on it. Or you can use just a standard black hen hackle. Not, it's got to be a hen hackle, not a um not a cock crackle so we'll stick with the traditional so that is your starling hackle and again you can see like the magpie you've got this iridescent sort of coloration i mean i'm sure you've all seen starlings and you get the the sun, when the sun catches them, the colours on them, it's quite, um, quite stunning really. So, expose the tip. So basically, that gold tip, if you 
put your half up prize over that. And then pull back and expose the tip. And then Cut off so you've got a little tie in point. Tie that in. Nice. And we'll just trap one thing. Okay, and wind that on. Again, again, it's a very delicate little hackle but so bring your, your feathers back barbs back just have a look just keep going so you're happy with the the density of hackle that you want. I think I've probably gone nearly four turns there, but that's fine. It's okay. Tie it in. Cut off the stalk. And then what finish? And that is a little black, which is says a little do that in a sixteen or even down to an eighteen if you can, and it's a little midge pattern or a, a, a small terrestrial. So, okay with that one. Lovely Mark. Does say the purple thread I think is really, it's really nice. I say the photographs will show it up better. I'll send those through. Um, Right, another one to show you, which shows a, again a slightly different technique. Um, we'll go with a size 14 again. And this one is a, what they call a, a winter brown. I'll show you. I've got one tied here. You've got a, um, yeah, you've got a orange thread body, a woodcock undercovered hackle, and a peacock head pearl. Now, you would think normally that to tie that you'd you put your thread on, you put the hackle on, leave a bit more of a gap and then put your hurl head. The only problem doing that is where you tie it off on your whip finish, you're gonna have an orange head and you don't want that. All you want to see is the peacock hurl head. So to overcome that problem, basically what we do is tie the fly in in reverse so we'll get orange thread
Don't be shy, guys. If anybody's got any questions, uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask Mark. Okay. So, right. Orange thread. So, tying your thread right up against the eye of the hook. You probably go back five, five or six turns. Snip off your waist. Now take one strand of peacock curl. and tie it in the, op the opposite way that you would normally do. So the tip is facing the back of the hook. A couple of turns will hold it because you've got wax on the thread so it'll give extra grip. Snip off and then wind your hurl Head. Go up to the eye and then back again. Okay. And then tie it off. A couple of turns. Okay. So now all you can see at the head there is. Is peacock hurl. There's no, there's no orange thread sticking through. So the next one is you use a feather from the the undercover feather on a woodcock. So instead of the top one which we did for the hairs lug, these are from underneath. Somewhere. Same procedure as normal. Expose the tip. And you can actually leave leave the tip on this to start with. So tie that in with the, the dull side facing up. And tie it in, tie it into the peacock hurl, right up against the, where you finished on the peacock hurl. Couple of three turns down the body. And then you, then you can cut off that waist. Okay, so. And now. So you, instead of going forward with your hackles, you're going back towards the back of the hook. It's a little bit more awkward and you will just have to gently tease some of the feathers. Keep teasing them back. Forward, sorry, forward. Probably two and a half to three turns should be sufficient. And then tie it off. Looks a bit, bit of a mess at the moment, but hopefully it'll come right. So 
the hot stray ones so just simply push them forward and then you can then do your body Up in touch in turns. And then a whip finish behind the hackle. Try not to trap in any feathers. And then just gently, gently push those. Pull those back. And that is a winter brown, an early, early season fly, obviously the name early season and autumn time. And I'm sure probably a good grayling fly, I would imagine. Um, Very good, Mark. Through the winter. Nice. So if you're looking at it, well, I'm running out of clip anyway. Let's see if I've got one. Got one there. So when you're looking at it face on, it's quite a sparse hackle, I suppose. That's sort of that's what it's like face on, and obviously that you can't see that your orange thread it the peacock curl is is covering it, which is what you want. Okay. So, let's just because the, the, with these spider patterns, there's quite a quite a number of patterns do have. Peacock hurl at the head and magpie hurl as well. Yeah. So you would do the same with the magpie as you've done with that peacock. Um, right, well, time-wise, we okay? I've got one, one more slide. Uh, okay. Yeah. This you is a. Do, you can do as many as you like, Mark. Where I've got unlimited time. Right. Whatever. Yep. Um, right. This is a a, a dry fly. Um, a March brown dry, uh, size 12 hook, because March, March browns are quite a big fly. So you can get away with a size 12, no problem at all. So. We've gone with the ideal dry again, size 12. For this, you can just use standard Uni 80 brown thread. Um, so we'll, we'll go with that. And wax on your thread. Yeah, 
you use any particular wax mark? It's just just sort of cobbler's wax. Um, and I've got this one, that one there, the darker one, because some patterns like, um, say like a green wells, you use, you would use yellow thread, but you'd wax it with the dark wax in it. It'll turn it a slightly olive color. Um, so, um, but just normal cobbler's wax. So, thread on at the eye. Let them go down about halfway. And then come back up. To couple of mil before the eye. Now the feather, the first feather for this is a partridge feather, a dark partridge feather from the outside of the wing. One of those that I've chosen. Um, I was, I was going to just as a point. If if you want to tie some spider patterns, if you're going to buy one skin, buy an English partridge. It's they'll cost you about thirty pounds, but you you can use virtually every feather on the skin for a whole you know whole range of flies. Obviously. If you get into spider patterns and you want to sort of be a bit more specialist, you can buy the, the starlings and the, the grouse and that sort of thing. But if you just want to tie a few, then a partridge hack is, you know, it's it's the same price as a good cape, isn't it? You know, 30 pounds. So and all, all these skins have all come from Steve Cooper. So there's a plug for him. So, right, we want um, so I picked a there's a dark hackle feather. Just take a few more fibers off that. Expose the tip. You can cut it off once you've actually tied the feather in. And you, would, you want to tie this in, the good side facing up, so you've got the natural curve of the hook and it's going to curve downwards. So tie that in just back from the, the eye of the hook on the top. Three turns should do. Hackle pliers. And again, you're going, you're going back towards the end of the hook. Tie the whole hack then. Okay, so two or three turns just to hold it. 
a coffee stalk. And just pull those feathers forward. Okay, take your thread back up right to the base of where you tied, finished tying off that ankle. And then you want a red cock hackle. Something like that. Okay. And you want the hackles to be just a little bit shorter than those partridge hackles. Mm. That one should do. Put the hackle on the top, good side facing up. And tie that in. Now you you probably want to put on about five, maybe six turns of this hackle. So go back a little way with your thread, snip off the stalk. You don't need your hackle pliers for this because you've got a nice length of. So then just put a bend in and just, again, you're going back towards the bend of the hook. But because you've tied it in the way we did, the fibers are still facing forward, which is what you want. Just gently, Okay, when you think you've got enough hack on there, a couple of turns to secure it. And then go down the body a little bit, tying in, because that will just help you, that stalk will help you give it a bit of taper to the body. Okay. <laughs> you might get one or two odd fibers, just, just snip those off. Okay, so now we're going to tie in a tail. Same colour hackle, as, um, same colour tail as, as your hackle. A nice bunch of, I don't know, eight or ten fibres. And being a March Brown, it's a reasonably, probably a longer tail than you would normally, normally do. So. Yeah, that's about all right. So, try to take that in. Tie it down and then put a turn underneath, pull it up, and that should just raise the tail fibers and sp spread them out a little bit. Snip off your waist. And take the thread up and tie it all in. So you should have a nice tapered, smooth body. 
hopefully. Back down with your thread. Now you've got to, you can have a choice here. You could either do a little hairs to your body with a bit of gold, gold, the gold rib on it, or um, peacock hurl, strip peacock hurl. So we'll do a peacock hurl for this one. Now the, if you want to do your own peacock hurl, there's obviously different ways of preparing them for, for you can either just get the that and use a rubber and get the the flu off that way. You can bleach them, but these are done in paraffin wax. And the beauty of the paraffin wax is it doesn't dry the feather out. The feather stays nice and soft. So it's uh, it's quite an easy easy process to do. It's, um, so, make sure we get the right side. Ah, oh, Paul showed me that little trick. Sorry? Paul Aston, he showed me that little trick. Yeah. Dip them in, yeah. get, get, get some uh, beads of wax, melt it, and then just dip them into it. Yeah, just, just, mac, just melt the wax in some water. Yeah. And then just dip your, your peacock, just dip your peacock feather in. A minute there, just dip that in. All you've got to do it, you don't leave it in there. I, I mean, when I first did it, I made that mistake and I had a load of wax on the feathers. And you know, but if you just dip it in, because because the wax will float on the water when, when it's melted, just break through that that surface film of wax and put a coating on the feather and then dry it off and, and then scrape it off with your nail. Then just get it off with an alley and just all comes off in one go. It's Perfect. Yeah, yeah, really good. So tie in your tip of your and take your thread up to behind the eye, to behind the hackle, sorry. As you all know, whichever way you do this peacock curl, it's delicate stuff, so you've got to be gentle with it. And then just, if you wanted, you could put a, a dab of varnish on the body just to strengthen it a little bit, but I'll put some peacock curl on, uh, some varnish on at the end over the top, which I think will be. Sufficient. Okay. So take it right up to the behind the ankle and then tie it off. Put the turns or that will hold it. Just one more turn for good measure and then we finish it behind the hackle. Just try not to trap any of those hackle fibers if you can help it. Last with a bit of persuasion is the Phoenix fly. So take again, take your hat, your quick finishing tool, and just push those feathers back a bit. Basically, you want those partridge feathers to stand up vertical. Okay. 
and quite even, yeah, that's okay. So that is the that is the finished fly. That is a March brown, dry March brown spider tied in a Clyde style fashion. So put a dab of varnish on. Protect the peacock a little. And that's the finished fly. Oh, you can see, a minute, just make sure I've got it on there. So you can see the corner oh, no, set the dry fly pattern. So um, that's about it. That well, those are the patterns I wanted to tie. So excellent. Are you happy with that? Very good, Mark. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Mark. Really good. Um, I mean, if, if, Mark, if you want, if you want me to tie another one, I can have another. I can find a few materials. And um, is there any? I don't know. Water hen blower? Yeah. I'll have a go. Right. Um, size 12. Right. Um, yellow silk. Right, so yellow silk, try that on. And go all the way straight down the body. Use that tag end as a guide for your, your turns to push it up against the one you've just done. Right. You want a bit of wax, probably a little bit more wax on this thread now. Right, the, um, the traditional material that they used for a water hen blower was for the dubbing on the body was a water vole. Well, that is a completely out of the question nowadays for obvious reasons. So mostly you'll see it tied with mold fur. Okay. So just want a bit of mold fur. Now the dubbing on this as Derek said earlier with one of those flies, you want at the end when you've done it, you want to be able to see the thread through the dubbing. So you've got to dub it on very, very lightly. Almost sort of squeeze it around. around the thread, okay? 
and then this is going to look a bit of a mess to start with, but hopefully it'll then come up the body, tying in and touching turns. Okay, so we've got that, which is obviously you don't want. So all you've got to do is just because you've you've dubbed it in so loosely, just with your, your thumb and forefinger, just rub it up and down the thread one way or the other, then perhaps twisting it, and gradually it will come out till you've got the, the effect that you want, which is really sparse and being able to see that yellow thread through the dubbing. Okay, so I think that's not too bad. But say it's easy to pull it off. You can't put it on afterwards, so even if it looks a mess when you first do it, don't worry about it. So that's the body. And then um, obviously the water hen is a moor hen. So we'll find one of those. And quite a specialist sort of cape, really, well, skin really, I mean, I think Steve Cooper's charging, I would imagine, probably 30 pounds for one of these skins now. And there's a bit of a waiting list as well. So you've got to be. So what you want for this is the on the wing, you want one of the outer covert feathers. They're quite, they are quite big, so So that's the, it's like a, almost like a smoky grey colour. Because a cheaper option would be a, um, a coop feather, because you can buy a pair of coop wings for about five pounds. So that would be a, an option, you know, if you didn't want to spend 30 pounds on a moor and is it the wing feathers that you use most feathers off it is for the moor it is yeah i mean really i mean i i mean i've got that moor hen skin but it, it 
in all honesty, it's only the wing feathers that you would really use. So I would, yeah, I, I you know, if you buy a wood, pair of woodcock wings, coot wings, grouse wings, you'll get most of the feathers that you want. It's only when you go to the sort of, it all depends how far you want to go into it, you know, into the spiders, you know, but you'll tie plenty of spiders with just, you know, woodcock, grouse, coot, a partridge skin, and maybe, um, what are the ones, a snipe, snipe wings. Um, so, snip off the tip so you got your tying point. Mark, do you ever use jackdaw neck feathers for them? I have, yeah. I've got, you can, yeah, you can buy, I mean, off Steve, you can buy a, what they call a jackdaw scalp, which is just a head and, the head and sort of upper neck feathers. And that, yeah. you know, that's all you need. And those aren't much. Um, or you could, if you know a local gamekeeper or something who could, uh, I mean, a jackdaws are, you know, you can shoot them if you want. Um, up to you, yeah. There's enough in our garden, that's for sure. So. And then just wind your pack on. Two, three turns, whatever takes you. You fancy? I mean, if you put three turns on, you know, because it's odds on if you're fishing these and you, you know, you have a few, few trout, they're going to nip off a few of the hackles anyway. So, you know, perhaps it's better just to have a few, you know, that extra turn of hackle on, because it'll, you know, once it's caught you a few fish, you put, you've probably lost, you'll probably lose a few hackles, so the fly will last a bit longer. And All the heads on these spiders are all fairly small heads. You, you know, it's, they're not um, sort of large pronounced heads that you get on a lot of wet flies. And that, gentlemen, is a water hen blower. I think I'm about done now, Derek. That's fine, that is Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic, Mark. Really good. Yeah. Thanks for doing it. Yeah, no problem. If um ah, thanks very much. Yeah. yeah thanks, Mark. Many yeah. thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, as I said, it's 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 all a question of how how far you want to get into spider tying as to you know what you spend on materials, you know, it's because some of it is pretty, you know, there's some pretty obscure stuff that they use, you know, some stuff, some game birds, you know, things like a dotterel, which is hard, you know, protected, you know, you've got no chance of getting it. So, you, you know, you do have to use substitutes for some of the birds. But, um, yeah, if you just want to, say, tie a few spiders, then I would say buy a, an English partridge and maybe a pair of woodcock wings or grouse wings and you know you'll be able to tie quite a few spiders with those um i mean reading through the old books i mean some some of some of the stuff they were using i mean because because in those days nothing was nothing was protected so you know there was there's quite a there's a few patterns using the feathers from a swift um yeah. a sparrowhawk a merlin 
<laughs> which which were all predators. I mean, to, to gamekeepers, they were predators. You know, a merlin. You know, it's a moorland falcon. So they used obviously the gamekeepers on the grouse moors. It was you know that they were fair game to shoot those. Um, was some of the others a sea, oh. sw a sea swallow, which is a common yeah. turn. You know, I mean, where are you going to get a common turn from nowadays? Um, bullfinches, greenfinches, really, they just tied with. Anything. All right, all right, to you in prison, Mark. You're all right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Being recorded. Anything, you know, anything, they could, anything they could get hold.